the really good thing about Creator is it's a completely free program, whereas Paint will sigh obviously costs money. So I think it's just an amazing free alternative to any like painting program really. A lot of people tend to not like Krita and I don't understand why. I think if you're persistent with it, it will work perfectly for you. But I will go through all of the basics first and I'm gonna take you through everything up to how to actually do a painterly illustration. One of the things that people always complain about when it comes to Krita is the lag when drawing. And I found a solution to this, um, I can't remember where I'd found this, but if you go into your settings and then you go into configure Krita um, and then click display, um, what you'll have to do is OpenGL should be checked, make sure you uncheck it. So OpenGL has to not be checked. Then by unchecking OpenGL, for some reason that fixes the lag in Krita. Of course, if you're drawing with like a really massive brush, like on a really massive um, pixel size, it is gonna lag quite a bit, but that's the same on any program really. Um, so, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is click uh, File, New. And here you can basically um, choose an image size. Basically, don't go too big if you know your computer can't work with it. Um, I know I've got quite a good computer, so I'm doing a fairly large um, size drawing today. Um, I think I'm gonna change it to landscape though. And um, you can change all the things like the color model, or profile, the resolution, um, how many layers you want it to open with. I think I want it to open with three. And um, what the background color should be. I usually to choose like a mid-tone gray for this and then turn this into a gradient once I open Krita. Um, and the background as the first layer. But basically you can change these, um, basically you can change these settings to whatever you want. So I'm gonna click create. And basically this is going to create a canvas. I don't really like the grey that I've chosen though because it's a little bit too similar to the grey in the background. So what I'm going to do is filter adjust brightness, oh make sure you have that layer selected. Filter adjust brightness and then up the brightness of the background just a little bit so it doesn't merge into the actual background behind the canvas. Next I really want to add um, a subtle gradient and what I do when I do add a gradient, it's right here under the eyedropper and the paint bucket on the left toolbar. Um, the reason I add a gradient is, um, and you don't have to do this, this just helps me a little bit, is I use a gradient to try and work out where the lighting is coming from. So in this case, for this drawing, I want the lighting, like he could be in like a, a, a daytime situation and um, I want the light from like the sun to, um, come in this kind of direction so diagonal across the canvas so that just adds a slight um gradient in fact i'm gonna make it a little bit bigger than that one minute um so that adds a gradient onto the canvas and that really helps me when it comes to lighting and everything so in terms of layers um i'm gonna assume you guys know what i mean by layers but for those who don't um a layer is basically um, I visualize them as like if you had this in traditional art, it would be like if you had different sheets of translucent like tra tracing paper or acetone over one another, so you can layer them up um, and not affect anything beneath it. So basically if I draw on layer 2, it's not going to affect anything on layer 1. Um, anyway, so the thing that you guys are probably going to want to know first of all is all the shortcuts and everything. So um, it is basically Control Z for undo. Um, to be fair, it does have all of the different like shortcuts listed under the edit menu. So um, you know, undo is Control Z, redo is Control Shift Z. Um, to to color pick, you have to hold down Control, and also 
I'm trying to think of any other things I use. Oh yeah, Control E is to merge layers. Now, I have the Express keys on my Cintiq already set up to do this for any kind of shortcut for me, but um, if you don't have Express keys on your tablet, um, you're gonna have to remember the shortcuts just because it will make life easier than having to click like edit and do it that way. So, um, I can understand like when you open up Krita, everything is a little bit overwhelming. Um, there's so many different tools and so many different brushes and it can be so confusing and you know what I will actually put a photo on the screen of the very first drawing I did in Krita. I did it in um, November 2015 and I drew it and I really hated how it came out so I just gave up altogether on drawing in Krita because I just found it too difficult. I hadn't watched any tutorials to be fair and it was only after I'd watched a few tutorials that I finally like got the hang of it. So here are all like the different tools, there are lots of different tools here. Um, if we scroll down we can make this a little bit bigger one second so you'll be able to see a bit better. Okay. So here we have like the variety of different brushes that all have like different textures and sizes that are available in Krita. Oh, and another thing I might add before before I get into what I use is that um, I sketch on a layer above the background layer and I turn the opacity down a little bit. So the color selected is black, but the opacity is down. So um, I either like to use the airbrush for sketching or I like to use the pencil and it there are a variety of pencil tools but this is the one that I use um, I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see but this one is um, kind of really trippy to draw with because it really does feel like a, you're using an actual pencil um, like the texture of it it's really cool like when I start sketching with this and using the different sizes, it really is kind of like sketching in traditional art. So if you find that you're really good at traditional art, but not so good at digital art, um, it might help you to use the pencil to sketch out. So the very first step to doing any kind of painterly uh, painting uh, would be to sketch it out first. It all starts with a sketch and this can be as messy as you like honestly because it will all be like finalized and rendered later on. Um, I'm gonna go through a few of the other brushes that I use so uh, most of the time I'll use the pencil for sketching and then for coloring in under the pencil I will use the so I'll use this tool which is ink underscore brush underscore 25 so this next we have what else do I use? I don't even know oh and then when it comes to blending everything together I use this brush which is called bristles underscore hairy and it looks like this and then finally um, if I want to add extra layers to add um, extra shading, I will use the airbrush. Okay, so these are the basics of what brushes that I use. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch something in the pencil tool and then I'll explain the next step after that. Okay, so at this point, um, I might decide that I don't like how the face is looking or I want to just go over things just to make them a little bit better. So in that case, I usually make this an even lower opacity and then I will go over it again in some areas just to make it look exactly how I want it to look. And then I'll just merge these two layers together. So I've basically just gone over the face to make the features look a lot more like how I wanted them to look. The next thing I will do is I will lock the layer, the lock, the transparency of it. So here you see this little checkerboard on the layer. You have to basically click that and it will come up with this little like padlock and it basically tells you um, the layer is locked. Then I will go in and change the color of the um, lines that I've made. So usually I prefer to use like a warm colour because if I'm doing people there's going to be lots of skin tones and um, I will then fill it in with like a deep red or a deep orange but you can choose any colour you want. Then I'll set this to multiply. Then I will hide all the layers 
make a layer above the background layer fill this in mm, probably like an orangey color and I will set this layer to color mode so then this will color over the background layer and the reason I've done this is because I want it to um, mimic the kind of lighting we have so this is a daylight situation so I want the background to kind of look like a golden ray of sun if that makes sense um, everything is gonna look kind of tinted like gold a little bit so having the background um, show this a little bit is gonna help a lot so I'm gonna merge those two layers together and then just for a final bit of um, pizzazz I will get the gradient tool and I'll add a slight yellow gradient up here maybe not that yellow maybe a little bit less yellow than that like this there we go that that will do it okay so now we need a layer between the background and the line art sketch we've done this layer is going to be the color layer so you're going to fill this with all the colors that you're going to use to color uh, whoever you've drawn in so I want him to have a somewhat pale skin tone but it will still be slightly gold because of the lighting environment that he's in so I'm thinking something like this so it looks slightly pinky now but once we add all the shadows and everything we'll make it a little bit more golden when choosing the colors it helps if you think in terms of complementary colors as well or certain color schemes that you want to um, use in your drawing so basically for this drawing i want to use lots of warm colors um, just to give it a nice like warm feeling but i will actually make his coat a deep blue or a deep purple just to give a little bit of contrast so it's not overboard on all the warm colors another little contrast i'm going to add is him having um, blue eyes because that kind of um, changes up the color scheme a little bit from the orangey and warm colors so this is where layer functions come in so above the color layer that you just created you're going to want to make a new layer and change the function of this layer to multiply then turn down the opacity to somewhere around about 40 30 percent and using whatever brush you want to shade um, you'll basically pick a color that you want to shade the skin tone so i see that there's a lot of this kind of color around the skin tone I'm going to make it a little bit more orangey just because of the lighting situation and using this layer I can basically draw over in the areas that I want there to be shade. So I'm going to show you what it looks like with and without that shading. So with it looks like this, then we're going to merge that down. Next we're going to do what you call localised shading, so what we do is the same thing again, make a new layer, make it multiply um, and turn the opacity down a little bit. Now we're just going to shade the areas that we want to be really dark, so just go over areas that you've already kind of shaded uh, just to give them some extra depth and shading things makes the, pushes them in highlighting things kind of brings them out towards you so things that protrude in the face like cheekbones they're going to be lighter they will catch the sun because they are higher up on the face um whereas things like um where the cheekbones sink in that's going to be shaded so just bear stuff like that in mind <laughs> 